We'll move on to our next speaker, and it's uh, Steve Mixis. He's an operations and maintenance manager with Ross Valley Sanitary District. Uh, go ahead, Stephen. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for being taking part in this. Um, again, uh, I'm Stephen Mixis, ops manager. Um, I have uh, 16 collections of workers, uh, four supervisors, two inspectors. And, uh, the return to work strategy after the shelter in place came in place uh, was a quite interesting process. One of the first things we did, uh, management did, was create a COVID exposure control plan. And within it, we designated roles of responsibility, uh, did risk assessments on all the sites, engineering controls, field work settings, office work settings. And it was uh, quite complicated, but uh, our general manager and assistant general manager did an amazing job. Uh, with that, we created safe work practices. And one of the main concerns our guys had was the aerosols uh, while jetting. So we basically put a full stop and uh, employees went home and were on standby. Uh, and, and that's where the communication and transparency came in. Uh, there was constant email exchanges, online uh, meetings and uh, discussion. Um, we had some guys that thought this was a government conspiracy and other guys that were actually shaking and scared. So we had to deal with it on a case by case uh, basis. Um, many of you that have gone through this probably had a bunch of failed attempts and lessons learned. Uh, we sure did. Um, we had multiple meetings and tried a one deployment plan and uh, we all showed up uh, Monday morning and uh, the main issue was the locker room and it was pretty funny watching a bunch of guys we gave everyone uh, measuring tape with six feet and we started walking around and we realized real quickly that our facilities were not adequate at the time so we uh, I called up the general manager I'm like hey man this, this isn't working we, we need to go back to the drawing board um, he did not hesitate for a second. We sent everyone back home and we convened and uh, started coming up with a tapering system, which uh, I think worked pretty well. And again, uh, I can't stress working with staff. Um, we've received multiple uh, emails, letters from staff saying, thank you for taking your time. I think we were very generous. I think the board did an incredible job uh, communicating to the GM and uh, down. But we based everything off of data-driven decisions. And with all the cons little conspiracy theories that employees can come up with, uh, we stuck to our guns and made sure, hey, we're following what the CDC says, what FASA says, CWA, and Marine County Environmental Health. So um, as soon as I found out um, CDC that no extra PP was required for jetting purposes, all right, let's bring everyone back. So we did buy extra PPE. And uh, we'll be we tempted to, but that comes in a little bit. And uh, the other thing uh, I was talking with the supervisors about is have a little sense of humor. So next slide, please. Um, that's, so right here, we came up with team leaders. That's LMCs. Um, everyone basically got their own vehicle. They reported to a certain place and uh, it was, instead of the social bubbles you hear about with your friends, it was, uh, uh, we tried, uh, a work bubble. So you're only staying with those employees. And for Don and Doffing, we had different start times. So we had, uh, we were working six hour shifts and uh, everyone, some people started at six, some started at seven, some started at eight. And we actually did a pretty, pretty good job of uh, getting all the tasks done. Uh, the main task, we threw everything at it because we had a couple of weeks off was line maintenance. Uh, we are an essential service but we decided uh, what's the most essential of our essential duties. And that was line maintenance, cleaning, emergency response, and our pump stations. So uh, next slide, please. So hopefully you guys can all see this. Uh, this was our sense of humor part. I bet everything, uh, we've seen that in the, these three months, April will be better, and then the Death Star shows up. So obviously things are not getting better. Uh, they're stabilizing, which is good. Next slide, please. This is where we had some real big issues. At the onslaught of this whole thing, uh, we put in massive orders and we thought we were all fine. The problem with USA Blue Book, Uline, and all these other vendors was they basically postponed ours, and rightfully so, to uh, medical staff and all kinds of uh, other facilities. So uh, we, <laughs> we ran out of wipes real quick, cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers, masks, 
And, and this is what we use. This is our bread and butter. We use PPE every day. It's sewage. So we came up with some pretty, pretty creative ideas. Um, it's the first time I've gone to uh, the HR manager and asked, can I send someone to a distillery to go pick up some hand sanitizer? So we found some local hand sanit uh, distilleries that uh, converted in Santa Rosa and Vallejo to uh, creating hand sanitizer. And then uh, basically we stocked up. Uh, I sent guys out uh, in every direction to try and find uh, and, and build up our storage. So uh, I think that went pretty well. Uh, next slide, please. Can somebody tell me what's the deal with all the toilet paper, please? I, I don't get it. <laughs> why, did, why is there no toilet paper? <laughs> next slide. So I'm gonna to touch upon uh, public outreach and uh, because the other uh, presenters, uh, they go over in depth what they did internally. But uh, I think we came up with some pretty cool uh, outside the box ideas on outreach strategy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, general manager created a really cool video that we'll show real quickly. The coronavirus has us all using more paper towels, wipes, and shop towels than ever before. Please throw them in the trash. These items should never be flushed down the toilet because they can cause unsanitary sewer overflows. A friendly reminder to flush only toilet paper down your toilet. So this was played on Comcast, uh, DirecTV, and we did put it on uh, YouTube. Um, we're still uh, trying to see and come up with the metrics on uh, if it was effective. Uh, next slide, please. And this is where we had some fun for the guys. Uh, we wanted to make sure people stay away from the trucks. So we had a bunch of old signs. Uh, we just created a new uh, flag and uh, basically stay back from us. We created cone holders, all kinds of banners. We put them up at the stations. Uh, I don't know about how many operations people there are, uh, but we had some real trouble getting into backyards. So we came up with door hangers. Uh, we set up uh, an Outlook calendar to, uh, for uh, scheduling purposes. And, and we no contact, and we'll get into the backyard, get in, get out. Uh, next slide, please. And again, we came up with uh, all kinds of magnets. We put them all the trucks. Uh, we, <laughs> we had some fun with the fandanas uh, by Gold Street Designs, if anyone wants to uh, look into that. And uh, again, social media. So all kinds of fun stuff on the public outreach strategy. Uh, we've received a lot of compliments. And this is my last slide. And to all of you, thank you for everything you do. Hopefully we do get a month of quarantine. <laughs> thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Steve. Um, I saw a number of questions uh, come in for Steve. So Steve, one of the questions is, is how did you deal with the conspiracy theorists? Did you send them home? <laughs> no, we, we walked them through it. Um, and again, Felicia's is amazing. Uh, everyone's different. You know, I, I had people come in with National Enquirer and we were just like, look, here's the facts. Here's the facts, state of the facts, CDC, Marin County Environmental Health. And uh, the two employees, they, they realized they fell back into place and uh, I haven't heard any more issues since. Okay. Uh, we got a question, excuse me, from Catherine Curtis. Are you fully back to work now? Uh, correct. We do have some people uh, staggered working home and off and on again, but all field operations were all back uh, full time and implemented uh, staggered uh, the normal shift and a four ten shift. Okay. And then and then forgive me if I say your last name wrong. Julia Hasney asks, do you have any aggressive customers or members of the public approach your field staff? Or your yes, <laughs> uh, that's, that's again why we started developing the signs and the cone holders uh, and, and just please, <clears throat> please stand back, stand back from us, you know? Um, people are, were screaming at us, you, you, this is shelter in place, you can't work. Uh, we had a handout. We're explaining to the person, uh, we are an essential service. Uh, we have to convey sewage. What's worse, um, us out here or sewer overflowing? So it, it's just de-escalation techniques. And looks like uh, last question is from Skylar Mahal. 
it says, why are we not promoting the use of cloth to clean surfaces? Then wash it, then wash these. He goes, are we stopping our concern about the huge growth of garbage dumps, climates, wipes are generally contained in plastic, either bags or hard plastic containers? Uh, that's not really a big issue for us. Sorry, you were breaking up during the question. Oh. Cloth wipes? Oh, lost them. How are we handling the restroom situation? Um, actually, we, uh, uh, we brought in a, a four bay uh, shower slash bathroom to the landing and got it all plumbed in. At first, I honestly didn't think it would be used that much. I'm pleasantly uh, happy to be wrong. So that was another good idea. Robert, do you Last want to move question. on? Oh, oh. Do you want to? Okay. Well, I think we have time for one more question from Gil Rivas. How are you handling the restroom situation? Oh, sorry. I was uh, talking about that. We brought in uh, restrooms from landing. Okay. We found out that a lot of the public bathrooms are closed. So the guys, you know, if they're out in Fairfax, far away from the uh, landing, they, they, there was almost no place to go to the bathroom. So uh, now that we have uh, a large facility and four bays, four showers at the landing, um, it was a wonderful idea. And uh, it's, it's working. Uh, we do have one person even in the larger bathrooms, uh, one person per bathroom, one person per uh, locker. Okay, all right, thank you, Steve.